everyone, I am Rebecca from Cheminitz, and it is time to leave no dye behind. Right here, I've got some leftover black, green, red, and some hints of pink, and we are gonna dye some yarn. Right here, I have 100 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino, and I quickly dunked it into a cooling off but still warm dye bath that started with a ratio of two tablespoons of white vinegar per eight cups of water. I do have a few. This was a little bit of purple pop. Uh, we have all kinds of colors here, but I just am in this pan and we're gonna use up this dye. Things are fairly random. You can see there's a lot of liquid, which is why I'm keeping us in this little pan. I did add on a reusable nylon zip tie, but let's go and just apply this dye. Uh, normally I start cool when I'm doing, I guess, anything remotely like this, and I'm curious, yeah, the colors are not, it's a little warm, the colors aren't going all the way through necessarily. So let's do a little bit of red. I guess I don't mind if there's some white, but I am going to try to help some of this go in. This color palette is not something I usually do with. I don't often deal with reds and greens. Uh, but that's what we're doing today, and we'll see how this goes. And worst case scenario, if I hate it, oh, we got some blend of color over there. If I hate it, we can over dye it. So that is always, always a choice. But we're gonna flip, and even though we've got some muddiness, uh, potentially from where these colors have uh, started to spread, I am going to continue adding them and working them in a little bit. Uh, my tap water starts off slightly acidic, so there is that, but we definitely, definitely tend to see um, acid dyes strike quickly, especially with a little bit of heat and that acid in there. So let's see, we've got, we're going to have some more black. This is, this is a fun colorway. It is a little uh, random and wild, but I'm having fun with it and intentionally leaving some white behind. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm just about to pour a bunch of water on top of it and let everything get a little muddied. And actually, I think that's what I was gonna do. I do like the white, black, and red, but I know, I know that there's some places where it's getting a little muddy, and so therefore, let's let's help it. Let's add some mud. I'm just gonna add some water all over and press this in. This, wow, look at how quickly these colors have all struck. Um, that isn't a lot of mud. It's added us, a, given us a little bit of a gray, but overall, things are still striking really, really fast. Interesting. This technique is very fun, very different from what I often do. And now, there's a little bit of green left in there. I have this bit of black left. And I do think I want to add... Actually, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> Instead of trying to do it in this pan, which can spring a lake and risk making a huge mess, I am going to bring the rest of this black over to that dye bath I mentioned. This is where I pre-soaked that yarn. And it is not that warm, but we're going to come... I don't think it's warm enough to melt these cups. I hope it doesn't melt them. I like to reuse these over and over. Uh, to mix colors. Okay, it is melting them a little. Well, maybe they didn't all fit together. Um, so that's just rinsing out that leftover color. And now I'm going to come in with our yarn. 
there's a timer for my other project. I'm going to come in with the yarn and after dipping it I'm now helping it just be very loosely in here. I am amazed with how quick those colors have struck. I mean I know things can strike quickly and I was expecting some of that but not quite like this. <laughs> hey my videos can run really long I have a feeling this one will be quite short. Uh, I really like this. All right I am going to turn on the heat. The stand off is still warm but I do want to set these colors and ooh interesting so as much as stuff is going in there is stuff that has come back out of some of this as well so I am going to leave this in here to heat and absorb that leftover color for at least 30 minutes it has been 30 minutes and I'm now going to turn off the heat and let's check. Yeah, the color is absorbed and we've got this beautiful bluish gray base with the black, red, and green. This is really fun. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here in the pot to cool for a while. Uh, and then once it's cool, we can go wash the yarn. Let's wash this yarn. I have to say, I'm amazed with how quickly and how well this yarn soaked up the color. I think starting with a little bit of warmth in the yarn, it feels to me like it sped things up uh, because this happened really fast and we got the spread in part by design because I decided to add other colors to do that. So, man, there is potential in this. I've done this kind of random technique for low immersion before, but I suppose this was like extremely low immersion and we weren't on heat while we were doing it. All the color is in the yarn. We're not seeing any bleeding. I haven't, I don't know if I've seen red strike that fast. I am encouraged and excited and this means that there's a lot of potential for having a warm bath with acid to soak your yarn in so then you can hand paint it and let the heat that's in there help those colors strike and then you can go and set more later on but this has the potential for having some fun with some really very good colors now granted it depends on the dyed color for sure i don't think that this would work as well with say purple pop or another color that requires a lot of time to fully absorb so there's that but i am happy and there's no bleeding so i'm gonna rinse out the soap put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry this yarn turned out really really cool i had no idea how much the colors would spread or how they'd stay but i am really really happy with this and i definitely need to take some notes while i'm editing this video to explore this approach with more intent using colors that are much more contrasting colors than things that I know that if they blend, it'll all blend into something beautiful. And I especially, I really like the sage green, the greenish gray of the background, and then we've got the bright green and red and pops of charcoal gray. This is really fun. This yarn still feels Christmassy to me, but let me know down in the comments if it, if it reads Christmas to you, because my, uh, lens on what feels Christmassy is different as a lot of my analysis of colors comes from the little Jewish girl who still lives uh, inside me. There are so many different ways that you can play with leftover dyes. And while I love to throw things on one skein of yarn and see what happens and see what I can get and then wonder, okay, can I do this on purpose? It is also perfectly acceptable to save the colors for a later date. If you have leftover green and red and you don't want to combine them, then save it for later or use each individually. Um, there are many different things that you can do with leftovers, whether it's 
over dyeing scraps, uh, remnant yarn that are in your stash just for something fun or hanging on to it until you can use it with some intent. All of those options are perfectly reasonable and valid. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please make sure that you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. If you're watching on your phone and want to make sure you don't miss an update when I'm going to do a live stream or premiere hanging out in the live chat room, in the YouTube app you can, in your settings, uh, turn on push notifications. Uh, so that's a great way that if I start an impromptu live stream, you can be notified and be aware of when that's happening. If you love my approach to dyeing yarn and want to help support the content here on the channel, I do have a Patreon. You can find the link below. There's lots of really cool perks like early access to some content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. Head over to patreon.com slash chemnitz and see all the details for all the different perks that you can pick from. I just know when I go to recreate this kind of technique at some point, I'm going to overthink it. There was a Dye Pot Weekly I filmed a month or so ago where I was trying to recreate an effect I get on a yarn mop and I was doing this trying to like measure colors and get a sense and it was like I was trying to make sure that it was reproducible versus the thing about the these leftover dye videos is that I'm going by feel, seeing how the colors are binding to the yarn and then letting that sort of shift the direction that I'm going with the colors. And there's something really, really fun and free about that. And there's no reason why I can't take some dye stocks, pour a bit in various cups, and then go for a similar process. I don't need to measure out the dye in order to have this freedom. And so maybe trying to hard to get a sense of, okay, how much dye am I using? That could be helpful, I suppose, to an extent, but maybe what's better is for me to explore depths of shade of more colors. So to get an understanding of, okay, this intensity of color is from this many grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And if I get a better understanding of that, then that would allow me to just freely explore some of these leftover techniques, I think, with more intent. But anyway, that's where my musings are right now. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to show you what beautiful colors we create in the next video.